Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer and today we're taking a look and installing the eTrailer trailer hitch receiver on a 2020 Toyota Tacoma. Now this is what your hitch is going to look like when it's on the Tacoma and it, for the most part it's pretty well hidden behind the bumper. You are going to have this brace that bolts up to the bumper beam so you are going to see these flange nuts but overall I don't think it really takes away from the usability of the hitch. Now this one being a two inch by two inch receiver tube opening means that you're going to have tons of different options when it comes to accessories. So whether you're putting a bike rack, a cargo carrier or a ball mount you're going to be able to find a ton of different options. Now a lot of those accessories will come with a pin and clip to be able to put that in the hitch but the hitch does not come with one. So if you need to pick one up you're going to want a 5 8 pin and clip and that's going to keep all those accessories in place. Our safety chain loops are easily accessible, so if you're planning on pulling a trailer, standard S hook goes on there no problem. Even a larger clevis hook is gonna be super easy to get attached. And speaking of towing, this has some pretty serious numbers as far as capacity goes. Uh, your gross trailer weight rating is gonna be coming in at 6,000 pounds, which is gonna be the weight of the trailer plus the accessories loaded up. You also have a tongue weight rating of 900 pounds, which is gonna be the downward pressure that's put on the inside of the receiver tube opening. And that's gonna be more for your suspended accessories like a cargo carrier or bike rack. And with 900 pounds, highly, highly doubt that you're ever gonna go over that weight capacity. So a four bike bike rack or a cargo carrier loaded up, you shouldn't have problems with the hitch being able to handle it. Just check your accessories and make sure that they can handle the weight. Now this can be used with a weight distribution hitch and that's gonna bump up those numbers, at least for your gross trailer weight rating, a little bit higher at 8,000 pounds, which is pretty serious, but you do wanna to check to make sure that the Tacoma is able to handle that. So check your vehicle's owner's manual to see what it's rated at and then compare that with the hitch numbers and take the lower of those two numbers. You also wanna check your ball mount and your ball and all of your components to make sure that those are also within that weight capacity. Now the receiver sits slightly recessed from the bumper, uh, but you do wanna make sure when you have folding accessories that it's gonna clear. And from the center of the hitch pin hole to uh, the edge of the bumper, we're coming in at three inches. And that's important for some of your folding accessories like cargo carriers and bike racks. And I don't worry too much that it's gonna make contact with the bumper um, or the tailgate. But just keep in mind with those folded up, you're probably not gonna be able to open up your tailgate. Um, but another thing that we're gonna check is going to be our ground clearance. And this is gonna be important, uh, mostly for determining a ball mount rise or drop. This one's coming in from the top of the receiver tube opening to the ground, right at about 19 inches. Um, so that's gonna be important. You can measure the coupler of your trailer, take that measurement, and then determine the rise or drop necessary for a ball mount to make sure that you have a nice level towing experience. With those capacities, I really like the hitch uh, as an option for the uh, Tacoma. Something that also that I like is gonna be the matte black powder coat finish. It's a little less uh, out there as far as a gloss coating. It's a little more shuttle and I think it looks better. It also holds up to scratches and chips a little bit better than your normal gloss coating. Now, as far as installation goes, this one in theory isn't that hard. You're just gonna be running bolts through the bumper beam to get that mounted up and then using factory weld nuts to tie bolts in to the frame of the vehicle and that's pretty much it. But the bumper beam's pretty narrow, so it's hard to fish wire that through and also tightening down some of the bolts. There's a little bit of clearance issues here and there, but uh, you should be able to knock this out, I would think, with about an hour or so. You could definitely do this in your driveway or garage and follow along on the video and I'm gonna walk you through the steps to make sure you get your hitch installed. So let's take a look at it. To begin our installation, we're gonna first start with our fish wire, a spacer block and a carriage bolt. And right here on this bumper beam, we're gonna be adding studs here with our new hardware. So we have the center here where a hitch ball might go. The two on the outside of that is where we're gonna to wanna to take our fish wire and take the coiled end, feed it through here and then as you kind of make your way up to the bumper beam, there's gonna be an opening. So we can see that this poked out. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a small bend here on my fish wire just so it doesn't pull through. It also makes it a little bit easier when raising the hitch up to pop this in place and it'll stay in. So at this point, go ahead, take your spacer block and you can feed this into that bumper beam. And then the coiled end, you'll just simply take your carriage bolt and thread it on there. Now you can pass this through and just pull your wire. You may have to jostle it around a little bit. Now it is very tricky to get this to drop in place because this beam is fairly narrow. It's hard to get the bolt to stand up straight. 
uh, and there are weld nuts or some welds in this frame that kind of catch it up. So once you get it to this section, what you're gonna wanna do is you can see the coiled end and the edge of the bolt right at our spacer block. Take a flathead screwdriver and just kind of push this up to where you can get the threads to just start through that spacer block and that should allow enough room for it to drop through. You may kind of have to play around with it here. But as you can see, I'm putting pressure on that bolt. Don't pull your fish wire off. So this is kind of a, this is a tricky one, I'll admit this. But if, as you push up that spacer block, you just want a few threads to pass through it and then that'll give us that clearance. So I'm gonna kind of play around with this here. And if you need to, you can, you can almost reach a finger in there to kind of help it along. So I'm gonna try to wedge that spacer block up at a good angle to get those threads started. And I do have a few threads started through there. So now I can push up on that spacer block to get this to drop through, hopefully. There we go. So play around with it. Make sure you don't pull off your fish wire. That's the main thing. And uh, again, just kind of get it at an angle to where you get a few threads started and that should help drop it through. So go ahead and do that on the other side as well. Take one of our new bolts and we're gonna be bolting up the hitch to these factory weld nuts that are on the uh, frame here. So we wanna make sure those threads are clean. Now this truck, uh, we live in the Midwest here, so winter time is pretty rough on metal as far as rust and corrosion. Um, so you wanna make sure that these thread through fairly easily by hand or at least start. If you're getting to the point where it's not gonna to wanna to spin through, what you'll wanna do is take some penetrating oil, spray it in there, and with a two brush, we'll go ahead and get that cleaned out. And this two brush with that penetrating oil is just gonna knock some of that corrosion uh, down to where that bolt should pass through. Now, if it's really bad, you may need to get a tap in the same thread pitch as the bolt and run it through just to kind of clear that out. But generally when you run the bolts through, that's gonna help uh, get this prepped to be able to get your hardware passed in nice and easy. If you need to grab an extra set of hands, feel free to do that to lift this in place. I have a serrated flange nut uh, in hand here. And that way when we get this passed up, I can pull the fish wire off and get one started. It'll hold it in place for us. So those bends, that I put on the fish wire, that's helpful here because now it's hard for these to pull back out. So feed these both through the corresponding hole. And then as we raise it up, just kind of pull those fish wires. And it's very tight here, so you might need to take a dead blow uh, hammer to kind of hit this along. The tolerances are pretty tight here. There we go. And with that, we can pull these through, make sure that the studs are hanging out. And once you get to a point where you have enough threads, you can pull the fish wire off. Now make sure that this doesn't push up as you're threading on your flange nut. If you need to, you can put a little pressure. Uh, while you can actually use the fish wire to kind of coil it around it to hold it in place. But uh, as long as you get a few threads started here, that's gonna hold the hitch up for us. Now we'll get our flange nut on the other side as well. Because this was tight, you wanna make sure that these are aligned with the weld nuts. So again, if you need to take a dead blow and just kinda of knock this along to get it lined up. Uh, once you have those holes aligned, you can grab your bolt with a conical tooth washer and, and the teeth on the washer need to bite into the hitch. So just make sure you have it in this orientation. And then we'll go ahead and get some of these threads started. So with all of our hardware hand tightened in place, we'll go ahead and snug it up. We don't need to get crazy here because we're gonna come back with a torque wrench and torque them down properly. Uh, so for the bolts that are in the frame rail, we're gonna be using a 19 millimeter socket. Now I have a, a electric uh, ratchet here to make it a little bit easier in these tight spots. But uh, if you have a ratcheting wrench, that's probably gonna be your best option here as it is fairly tight. In fact, this one, I, I can barely get this on there. So. I might have to swap over to that ratcheting wrench to get this tightened down. Now, the nuts that we have on our bumper beam here, these are gonna be a three quarter inch socket to get these tightened down. So go ahead and snug those up as well. And 
we have everything snugged down. We're gonna grab our torque wrench and our metric bolts that are in the frame rail are gonna be a different torque setting than the two on the bumper beam. So make sure you're checking the instruction manual for those torque settings and change accordingly. Um, so we'll go ahead, get these torqued down. Now the one that's right underneath the hitch is gonna be kind of tricky. Um, your best bet, you might be able to get away with a swivel, a crow's foot attachment might be your best option. Uh, there's just not a whole lot of clearance as far as the socket and the head of the torque wrench to be able to get in there. But uh, do your best and try to get that torque down to that proper setting. So now with all of our hardware properly torqued down, your hitch is officially installed. All that's left to do is load up your accessories and hit the road. And that was a look and installation of the e-trailer trailer hitch receiver on a 2020 Toyota Tacoma.